Ellen McCauley prayed off in Syracuse, New York. I think hope is so important that I want to spend some more minutes on it because it is so easy in this world to fall into despair. It is so easy to turn to food, alcohol, heroin, whatever your drug of choice, gambling, whatever it is. But if we keep sight of what we're working for, Remember the meeting when I said our goal in life should be to get to heaven. Now, if you went and asked 100 people on the street, what's your goal in life? They'd be like, well, to retire early, to have a million dollars in my 401k, uh, I want to have a nice family, nice house, a couple of cars. Maybe, I doubt it, especially in Syracuse, maybe in the Bible South, someone would say, get to heaven. But if you really think about it, can we take those cars in house and million dollars in our casket? No. no. But we can take our life and offer it as a sacrifice to our Lord, and he can say, well done, good and faithful servant. Hope is the virtue whereby the individual strives for heaven as something which is possible, but not yet guaranteed. Oh, there's a lot of feel good out there. God is so loving, so merciful. He won't really care what I do because he's going to let me go into heaven anyway. I know he is. The thing is, we don't know. I mean, there's a book. It's called the Bible. It gives us kind of a blueprint. I think you got to keep the Big Ten. I think you got to be kind to people. I don't think you can profess your love for Jesus in one breath and be breaking the Big Ten and another and get to heaven. I'd like to bet that God wants us to be the best that we can be. C.S. Lewis says, those with their eyes fixed on heaven are the ones who do the most good for earthly societies. The English evangelicals are the ones who, who abolished the slave trade and gave courage to the Americans to abolish slavery. Union with God has somehow grown unattractive to a great many people. It's unattractive, you know. We want to text and Skype and do all these things, but do we really want to go to a Life in the Spirit seminar, which I think is one of the most powerful things we can do to help us get to heaven, to give us the ammunition we need to fight the evils of this world? You know, so many people think that if we choose God, we're going to have to give up certain things forever. Well, you know, I want to be a good Christian, but maybe when I'm old, and then I won't want to fool around as much as I do. And, you know, people think that. Oh, good, I made it to 70. Now I'm going to be good. Yeah. But the thing is, what are we giving up? What, getting drunk? You know, uh, stealing? I mean, what are we giving up? To be a good Christian. Maybe giving of ourselves. I don't know about any of you, but I've never given of myself and not felt such an enormous reward. You know, I was saying to Bob last night, the people in the Pray It Off group have been so kind. I've got so many beautiful cards, mass cards, donations to Humane CNY. I said, Bob, I feel like I need to be more generous. I need to be kinder. Your, your generosity and love has inspired me to be even more generous and kind. It goes on. What gives us the greatest pleasure in life? What do we enjoy the most? Now, I'm talking about pleasure. So, besides helping people and all those nice godly things, I wrote down family, hanging out with my fam, hanging out with my friends, books, oh, I love to read, I love live theater, I love sitting in the audience watching them sweat, I love to see the spit coming out of their mouth, and I love live theater, I love it, I love live sports, I, I love live sports, but I don't mind watching it on TV, especially when I'm going, thank you, Jesus, we're in the final four, I was, I, I've gone through a tough time lately, but i got to tell you, Sunday night, Bob and I held each other and cried. We were so happy that Syracuse was in the final four, men and women. Those things give me pleasure. And guess what? There's going to be your family in heaven. There's going to be books in heaven. There's going to be live theater in heaven. Maybe I'll even get my acting chops on again and come see me in a play. All right, I'll do my Bloody Mary for you later if you want. But the thing is... 
So many of us are not magnanimous to ourselves. We do not set the highest goal for ourselves, but we're content to rather frivolous, mediocre aspirations. If you were to say to me, Ellen, uh, eight years ago, eight and a half years ago, you're going to start a weight loss group at Holy Family, and there's going to be people whose lives are going to change, who are going to be healthier and live better, and they're going to give to more people. I would have never aspired to that. I would have never thought it was possible. I would have said, what, what a 300-pound woman running a weight loss group for eight years? Are you crazy? Why can't we aspire to be better than what we are now? We must encourage a desire to do great things for God, to change the world for God, to be given the honor and glory that comes from God's approval. We must not settle for anything else. And guess what? We don't have to do it on a grand scale so that everyone in Facebook is going, I love Ellen McCauley. I mean, I don't need to go viral. I, I like to be right here with you guys. If we can do good work in our community, maybe it'll touch somebody who will go out and do good work there. The primary threat to hope, though, is despair. We need to understand that if we have excessive self-focus, it was very difficult for me to despair long after my sister passed away because my mother immediately went into critical condition. I had to have hope that she would get better. Thank you for your prayers, because guess what? She's doing great. Thank you, everybody. So often we think, I'm too weak, I'm too sinful. Why bother trying anymore? But with God, all things are possible. We can't be lazy. We can't be distracted. See, so, you know, I wanted to exercise, but then I, I realized the good wife was on, and I really wanted to exercise. <laughs> So, we need not to be distracted by the iPod stereo, and we also have to understand that God will not force us to choose Him. The key to eternal youthfulness is hope. I looked at that list last week of the 90-year-old woman, and you know which one I picked as my favorite? The best is yet to come. I'm 61 years old, and I picked the best is yet to come. How's that for hope? How's that for optimism? I didn't say, well, I better start making my funeral arrangements. I'm old. I said, the best is yet to come. You know, we could have the idea of life is tough, and then you die, and that's it. Or we can follow Christ with hope, optimistic vitality, with enthusiasm, and we can try to get our bodies in shape so that we can better do his work. I'm going to stop right there, Bobby. <laughs>